Oh, hey guys, I'm uh, here on Washington Avenue uh, near the Dominion building below WI. You know, I have a friend who, uh, who worked on Capitol Hill for the Heritage Foundation, for a senator, and for different people, and he's helped me um, really think about and understand the way politics and, and, and our country works. And one of the things that he, he said uh, has really struck home uh, to me he said, um, you know, communists view capitalism as inherently immoral. And a lot of times libertarians view capitalism as inherently moral. And really it's neither. You don't get your morality from the market. Um, capitalism is a force of nature in the same way that, say, a river is a force of nature. And, and, and we can bend it the same way that we bend rivers. But when Grafton Dam was built, it didn't happen because the city council of Grafton sat around and, and gave opinions on how much concrete should be used and how much, uh, uh, how, how far into the hillside the, the anchors uh, should be driven, what tensile steel, how, how strong it should be. It happened because Congress uh, charged the Corps of Engineers for building a dam to control floods on the Ohio River and then let engineers make the rest of the decisions. But when it comes to forces of nature like capitalism and the market, um, we generally leave that up to politicians with bad results. I've mentioned a book before called uh, Jane Jacobs' Life and Death of uh, Great American Cities. And she talks about the process of slumming in a neighborhood in which she says it occurs when um, capital is removed from a community. In our case, that happened uh, when everything moved to Jerry Dove and, and years before that, moving to Bridgeport. And a lot of times you get homes that are um, fall into disrepair and then you get what she calls shadow money and we would call slumlords moving in to buy properties at estate sales or tax sales and doing a minimal amount of maintenance um, to keep them up and then rent them out until they could no longer really um, be serviceable, at which point the city would uh, buy them from eminent domain. Um, and she kind of demonized what we would call slumlords a little bit. And it's very obvious uh, to me that at least some in our city council are aware of this pro um, process. So they came up with the idea that we just demolish the house without uh, taking it by eminent domain and that we'll target these slum lords and drive them out of business. And if we do that, that means that we will no longer be a slum, correct? No, because what happens is, you know, this property at one point in time in a not so distant past was rented out. It had people in there, uh, property taxes were being paid, B&O taxes were being paid on the rentals, and now it, it's got a half-assed boarding job and that only because Ashley uh, Carinero, Carinero uh, complained about it. Vagrants have been in there doing who knows what. So people are still living in it illegally. They're just not paying tax. They're not bound to any rules. And the houses are decaying that much faster. Um, so we talk about having a super successful demo program and code enforcement program. Uh, this is the actual evidence. If uh, Tiger Dam started leaking water, engineers would, would rush to figure out how to fix it. Our city doesn't rush to figure out how to fix it. They want to double down. They don't want to understand the problem. And, and unfortunately, uh, until we do that, uh, we're just going to continue to be ground, ground into dust by the, you know, what would be natural force of capitalism. Um, think about it, and I'll holler at you later.